Good evening, teacher. Hi, good evening. Welcome. Good evening, teacher. Hello, good evening. Okay, class, I hope everybody's ready. I will call the attendance. So please remember you have to turn your cameras on. And when I call your name, you say present, all right? Remember today is October the 12th, all right? <clears throat> Okay, Andrea Sofía Benítez Gómez. Present teacher. Blanca Alejandra Portillo Bermúdez. Present teacher. All right. I thought you were saying that, I mean, you said on the chat that you have travel. No. No, didn't you? All right, all right. Okay. I had someone saying that uh, just give me one second. Good evening, teacher. Good evening. How are you doing, Juan? Good hour, teacher. All right, all right. Um, oh, yeah, I read Alexandra. So I thought it was you, but it is not Alexandra. It's Alexander, I think, right? I'm sorry, Blanca. Okay. Okay, teacher, no problem. Okay, Carlos Ernesto Perez. Carlos Roberto Alemán Prudencio. Present teacher. Okay. Claudia Yamilet Coreas. Ellen Nilsson Aparicio del Cid. Present teacher. Okay, Eric Jose Hernandez Campos. Present teacher. Hello, Eric, we miss you. Hazel Elizabeth Navarro de Cervellón. Present teacher. Okay, you Henry call? Albert. I'm sorry? <laughs> yes, Eric, we miss you. Okay. I'm present teacher. All right, yes, yes, now you are present. Henry Alberto Perez Rosales. Here I am, teacher. Okay. Hernan Antonio Chacon Lopez. Presente, teacher. Good evening. Good evening. Juan Francisco Salmeron Alas. I said he was at work. All right. Karen Jamilet Rivas de Ayala. Present, Present teacher. teacher. Present. Okay. Very good. Magdiel Esau Garcia Morales. Present, teacher. Okay. Rafael Alexander Serna Diaz, I think he Present is the teacher. one. But you are at, uh, at home, uh, I'm sorry, Alexander, are you at home or at work? Uh, I am in home, teacher. At home, all right, <laughs> very good. Rafael Antonio Barrera Diaz. Present teacher. Okay, Rafael, Ricardo Tony Mendoza Castro. 
Ricardo Tony. Rosa del Carmen Santa María Tobar. Present teacher, good evening. Okay, good evening. Thank God you are available today to participate. Um, Wilber Alberto Perez Mendez. Wilber, are you there? Are you there yet? No. All right. Jose Abel Izaguirre Mendoza. Jose Abel. No, Jose Abel tonight. Pedro Alexander Osorto Sánchez. Okay, Pedro, are you going to be as the listener tonight? Please confirm on the chat. Thank you. Okay, Claudia, there you are. Mm -hmm. Okay, Claudia Yamilet, yes. Present teacher. Okay. Present. Is Carlos Ernesto here yet? Not Carlos Ernesto yet, all right. Okay, dear class, we are starting the class by doing some feedback, all right? <clears throat> Remember, unit three is about troubleshooting. Troubleshooting, all right? Hmm. And today is the last day of this unit, all right? Today we're ending, we are finishing this unit tonight. We have to cover until page 38, you know? And well, we're going to start now, all right? So the topic is troubleshooting. I mean, the general, general matter for this unit is this one. And welcome everybody to your video conference number 15. Okay, welcome. We are going to have this topic today, okay? We have to... Mm, remember some things and also to practice some other, all right? We want to recognize the, the idioms and how to use them in a conversation and writing and reading, all right? So today we have the part two of how to use idioms, all right? The use of idioms. Do you remember what? are the idioms what are the idioms do you remember what they are who remembers a ver alguien que me quiera decir que son los idioms they are uh colloquial expressions about the language okay mm -hmm. and they don't have a literal meaning all right the the words that you are reading it's not in the literal sense. It has a cultural, a cultural meaning, okay? Uh, totally different what it says in the written things, right? Okay, so the objective tonight is that by the end of this lesson, this lesson, you will be able to recognize and use idioms. Idioms is, mm, you know, it's a very big list, a large list of expressions. And usually and constantly, they are adding some more because of the experience of the speakers, all right? But there are others that are like traditional, right? Traditional. You can uh, hear those expressions in certain regions also right maybe in british english it doesn't make the same meaning or the the same sense as in american english 
So this is a challenge for an English learner, all right? This is a challenge for an English learner. What are going to be your tools to learn the idioms? First, your dictionary, all right? Your dictionary. Uh, and we have other practice, all right? Practice, add this to your vocabulary, to your everyday English. Okay. So <clears throat> the agenda for tonight, we have some written exercises in our manual on page 36. We want to complete those exercises about the phrasal verbs, remember? And the second will be, well, it was to <laughs> talk about the objective and the topic for tonight, right? After that, we are going to use idioms, right? We are going to uh, know how to use idioms. And we are going to see some examples of idioms and used in sentences for us to practice these expressions. We have a reading comprehension activity on page 37. It's going to be a listening and reading comprehension activity for us. And then in the break of rooms, I hope we have enough time and you go to write a short story talking about your own experience troubleshooting, all right? With anything, maybe at work, may, maybe with a device that you bought and you want to settle up and set it up and you couldn't and you had trouble. So how you, how you could uh, overcome, right? Overcome uh, with this problem. All right. So let's start by our manual. In our manual, we have this written exercise on page 36. We want to read, uh, actually we read it yesterday, but we want just to refresh, refresh it. So page 36, and here we go. It says, how to use two word phrasal verbs. Remember, two word phrasal verbs. There are other with multiple words, all right? There are others with um, multiple words. They are compound also for adverbs and prepositions or, or maybe with a prepositional phrase. But in this case, we are just identifying two word phrasal verbs, all right? We had take after, okay, take after. That means that you look alike someone, right? Or you behave alike someone. For example, the example we've got there, he takes after his father. He takes after his father. Mm -hmm. Okay, he is similar, he behaves just like his father behaves, all right? So you see here, for example, uh, we could say Rafael takes after his father. Maybe his teachings, maybe his knowledge, maybe his father was the same profession as he chose, right? So that's, when we use take after, all right? Hmm. All right, call up, call up. It means that you cancel, cancel something, all right? You don't want us to, to attend, or maybe you have something else to do, something came up and it was more important than the other, then you call off that, um, that, uh, appointment, right? So, Mary called off the meeting. Mary canceled the meeting. 
pero podíamos decir ayer, decíamos que nosotros podemos usar perfectamente el verbo en su sentido literal, ¿verdad? Podemos usar cancel. No es ningún problema. Eh, usted puede usar perfectamente cancel. No es una regla que tiene que usar called off. Pero sí tiene que saber que los native speakers o cuando usted escucha, ellos sí lo usan mucho, ¿ok? Ellos sí usan en mayor medida y es como constante, ¿verdad? Así como nosotros. ¿Se han fijado que hay unos youtubers que usan muchos eh, idiomas uh, o frases idiomáticas del español? Eh, hay uno que me da risa. I don't like that much his reports. No me gustan mucho sus reportes, pero me da risa su forma de hablar. ¿Ok? Eh, y él dice, eh, va, no se hagan los de los panes y dejen ni un like. That's a very funny way, but Salvadorian people use that, all right? Salvadorian people uh, speak similar, all right? Speak similar. And they understand. Salvadorian people understand. But what about, yeah. uh, excuse me? Go ahead. I have a question. Tell mm, me. Slang is the same as un idioms. No. Slang is different. Slang is different. Yeah. Uh, it could be idiom. Idiom. Mm. Okay. The phrase or, or the idiomatic phrases are used also in, in very formal language. Okay. Slang is mm, not proper language. Formal. Yeah. Sometimes, yeah, more than informal because you have informal, you have informal, but you have slang that it's a, a great lower, right? A great lower. Yeah. It's sometimes it's not bad. And in, in the slang are also the bad words, right? So, yeah, mm, I think in your workplace, it's not, it's not proper to use slang. Okay. It's not proper to use slang. Hay algunas palabras del, del slang o de la, del lenguaje de la calle que se van volviendo parte eh, y que se van como pasando por alto la forma de ofensa, ¿verdad? Por ejemplo, eh, nosotros decimos, o al principio de, este, de esta unidad decíamos que eh, si existía, do you, I mean, is there a fault with the machinery, for example, or... Uh, It was a faulty product, all right? Or you had a fault in your house, all right? Maybe electrical, maybe from a plumber thing, or I don't know, things related to, um, to the house or maintenance of your house. Y hay una palabra que se ha vuelto muy normal ahora, es fix her upper. Y eso es un slang. Es un slang, pero lo usamos en un lenguaje formal también. Okay? Okay. Fix her upper means things that need to be repaired. All right? Hello, Ricardo Tony, tell me. Hi, teacher. Hi. Good evening. Good Where? evening. Welcome. Yeah. Yeah. I stay right now in unknown dimension. Uh, I'm sorry? Uh, right now, I stay in unknown dimension. Oh, really? How come? Yeah, because when I try to enter the class, uh -huh. I traveling in the time. Oh. I, uh, right now, I stay in tomorrow. The really? Day Yeah, the date, uh, I, the entry in the, this class is for tomorrow, 13. Oh, seriously? This is very interesting, but... Mm, uh, I, mm -hmm. I sent I the, the, the picture in the chat. Really? Yeah, <laughs> I didn't have a, a viable, the, the classes today only... The available the class of tomorrow. I don't know for what, and I maybe because I I I feel your your advice <laughs> when oh, I try. Yeah, October the thirteenth. Uh -huh. Yeah, 
Is Interesting. <laughs> yeah. Hey, someone had this same problem? Did someone have this same problem? ¿Alguien más tuvo ese problema al conectarse? ¿Que no encontraban la fecha de hoy? No. No. Oh, this is strange. This is strange. Apareció, a mí me apareció con fecha 13. También. Ok. Yeah. A mí solo me... Teacher, a mí solo me sigue dando el problema que me saca o se me pierde el audio. El mismo problema desde de, de un inicio. Oh, ok, ok. So please, everybody, in the breakup room, make a list of those um, troubles you had. And we are going to talk about troubleshooting those. All right. We, we are going to try to do that. Oh, my God. This is interesting. Yeah, I have never seen it. So, mm -hmm. and then teacher, I, I don't know uh, where I am because, uh, or maybe, or oh, tal vez falté ayer o voy a faltar ahora, pero he estado los dos días, pero viajé en el tiempo. Okay, yeah, you did time travel. All right, uh, bueno, miren, la verdad, la verdad es que tuvimos la situación de que eh, no tuvimos una clase, ¿verdad? No tuvimos una clase, entonces tal vez por ahí viene la desprogramación, ¿verdad? Tal vez porque el lunes no entramos, ¿verdad? Se ha desprogramado la cosa o reprogramaron la que vamos a tener, la, la que vamos a hacer como makeup, ¿verdad? Makeup class. Entonces probablemente por ahí venga la cosa. Por el momento todos son bienvenidos, todos van a estar registrados en el día 12, ¿verdad? October the 12th. Por lo menos es lo que me sale a mí en la lista, ¿verdad? Ok. Um, and the, um, I, I go back to the, to the class. I have a, a question because the phrase of group. All right, tell me. Uh, when do you, you use uh, phrase of group, the next uh, word, you always uh, ever uh, use it in past? Not necessarily. You can conjugate the verb. You can conjugate I have the, the verb. same question, teacher. You can use them what? in any tense. You can use these verbs uh, just as in the present simple, in the simple past, past participle, and the future, all right? Present continuous, you can conjugate the verbs. According- I have the same question, teacher, sorry. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, in the first example, uh, say takes after, and the next color of the next is in past. When yeah. did I say, when did I know what kind of, uh, of verb can I use? Okay, the tense of the verb is determined by when the action happened, all right? When the action happened. For example, if you are using the simple past, it means that the action started in the past and finished in the past, all right? And if, is, if this is a thing that maybe it's a habit or always happen, then remember routine things or it's happening in the present on these days, then we use the simple present, remember? So we follow the same rules how we use the different verb tenses, all right? Mm -hmm. It depends the context. It depends on when the action happened, all okay. right? Mm -hmm. If you want to express your own action, remember, when did this happen? Uh, is this happening now? Then I use present continuous, right? For example, I'm calling off the meeting right now, okay? Or later, right? I'm calling off the meeting uh, from the uh, uh, for the afternoon, all right? Um, yeah, so we use the present continuous in that case. So this is an, as an example, right? Mm -hmm. You can use that. Imagine this person died, right? Imagine this person died, he took after his father, right? He took after his father. Se comportaba igual que su papá. Era igual que su papá. So, but he is not here now anymore, right? He's not alive anymore. So we can use the simple past. Yeah. Okay. 
we can use this uh, present perfect too, right? He has taken after his father. Okay, before he didn't, but now he does, right? So, yes. Mm -hmm. And so on. Mm -hmm. So on. We follow the same rules as uh, we conjugate the verbs or the verb tenses use. All right. Okay. Okay, teacher. Okay. And the special verbs are some words that Americans use to, to say something. For example, el caliche salvadore, we have the caliche salvadoreño or some words that we can understand and they are the words. Mm -hmm, exactly. Pero no es exactamente caliche. Okay? Ajá, ajá. Como, ajá. por ejemplo, palabras que decimos, pero que no significan exactamente eso, sino que otra. Como dicho o algo así, por ejemplo. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, sure. Tell me. Have you ever hear like father, like son? Yes. Like father, like son. Yes. Uh -huh. And his uh, idioms. Or... Yes. <laughs> That's a phrase. That's an idiom. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's an idiom. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay, and I know a joke about that. <laughs> I remember you remind me of, uh, of a joke. Hello, a joke. <laughs> Actually, it's in Spanish. Okay, actually, it's in Spanish, but I will try to put this in different words. Let me see. Uh, there were two guys in front of a house, all right? And they were like uh, in this way saying, that's my house. They were drunk, right? That's my, no, no, no. That's my house, said the other one, the other guy, right? And then someone <laughs> shows up on the window, right? And she says, oh, like father, like son, <laughs> right? Uh, they were it was sounded. good, it was good, yeah. <laughs> All right, <laughs> in the Spanish it was different, yeah, <laughs> more funny, I think, or funnier, but <laughs> yeah, it sounds nice. All right, guys, continue with this. Uh, we, we have these verbs, these six verbs, and we want to match what's the preposition that goes with them, all right? Mm, to make it correctly. So we learned some verbs yesterday. So now number one, the example is without, right? Number two, it says switch, switch up. Mm -mm, no, right? What do you think? Switch off. off. Yes, switch off. Switch oh. off. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, then clean. Clean up. Clean okay. Up. Okay, bye. Entremos a la pantalla. Please, everybody come to the board and match. Everybody do it, please. Match the verb with the preposition. Mm -hmm. Good. Very good, very good. So now we want to complete the sentences we have uh, below this box, okay? We have to complete each sentence with one of these verbs, all right? So they are six uh, sentences. We have six verbs here that we have to place them, all right? So number one, number one, is the example, right? Then it says, can you pass me that, that spanner? I need to tighten up this bolt, okay? What is bolt? Hey, come on, bolt, bolt. Mm. 
Es como tuerca. Oh, ok. Bolt. It says tornillo here. Mm. Yes, it's, it's tornillo. Mm -hmm. Tuerca is nut. Nut, es cierto. Ok. How do you spell tuerca? In English? Uh, and you... Uh, sí? Nut. But that's... Uh, Oh yeah, yes. Mm -hmm. But we have to to pronounce that not okay. Not not mm -hmm. not with the U because not with the letter O is nudo okay. Not a U with a, a K. T. Nut. That says not not mm -hmm. not. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you very much. Now, number two, this workshop is very dirty. Let's, Let's clean up this good. place. Mm -hmm. Okay, number three. Remember to power off the power before you remove the machine. Two. Turn off. Turn off. Turn off. Tenemos que usar, ajá, uh -huh, exactly. Mm -hmm. We could say turn off. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think it is switch off. I think it is switch off. Okay. Number four, I hope the computer won't. Want? Do right. Face up. Say up. Seize up. Seize up. Seize up. Huh? Seize up again. Okay, let's read number five. If you don't lubricate these types of machines regularly, they will. Seize up. Seize, seize up. up. Yeah, so it can be on number four, right? So, seize up. Okay. Mm -hmm. What about number six? Call up. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is call up. Call up. Uh -huh. It is call up. Ahí arriba me pusieron call off. Okay, pero es call up. Okay, aquí me pusieron call off todos porque vimos el ejemplo anterior, ¿verdad? de cancelar, pero aquí no tenemos que cancelar al técnico, aquí tenemos que llamarlo que venga, ok, so it's call up, muy bien, uh, entonces, el, eh, la duda la tenemos en el 3 y en el 4, a ver, ¿quién da más? ¿quién da más? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I right, think so. Because it's mm -hmm. the action. Yeah, switch off is like to cut the power, right? Cut the power. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and what because about a computer? Need... They turn off. Okay, they turn need... off. Do it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, then turn off and switch off. Right? Switch off. Teacher, tell me. But it is it, valid if you use it. Uh, turn off. <laughs> if you use turn off in the context, or or maybe because uh, we still learn, if uh -huh. you use uh, turn off, is valid. Yes, it's valid. Of course, it is. Of course. Yes, you can say turn off the power. Mm -hmm. Yes, you do. Thanks. You can do it. Mm -hmm. All right. So this was the exercise. And now we are moving forward. All right. 
to this reading because we have on page 37 a reading. Please don't go there. No vayan ahí ahorita. No vayan a la página 37. Everybody, please. Your eyes on the teacher. Your eyes on the teacher, right? Okay, we don't want to know what this is about yet. We are going to watch a video, okay? And you are going to listen to the reading, okay? Not reading along yet. Listen to the reading, all right? Tips on how to organize a preventive maintenance plan. Step 1. Get the right people on board. Before you begin to organize your preventive maintenance plan, you need to have the right people on board with the plan. Include top management, maintenance managers, maintenance technicians and any other staff who understands the way your system operates. This could include people from data processing, accounting, craftsmen, and members of production and production control. You may not need input from each of these people at every step of the process, but it's important to have them on board and kept up to date so you can get important feedback as you go. Step 2. Set goals for your preventive maintenance plan. Using your task force's input, set goals you hope to achieve using the system. Begin training your task force on the computer skills they'll need when your preventive maintenance plan goes into full effect. Step 3. Inventory the equipment and assets. Go through your facility and inventory all the equipment you're considering, including in your preventive maintenance plan, tagging the equipment as you go. Create a list of all the assets you have responsibility for. Record the following details as you go. And keep in mind that this process is much easier to carry out and organize with the assistance of a good preventive maintenance software program. All right. What did you listen right now? Ideas, words, phrases. All right, come on. This is a serial process to organize uh, in, in, the, in the workplace and employees for work in, in, in for working team. And this uh, this person uh, every 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 step he he makes in, in the companies and different uh, different issues for for organize a, a, a every one area. Yeah, right. Um, yes, very close. Very close to the idea. You were listening about the team. You were listening about the employees or the people on board, right? And they are following a process, maybe starting a process. All right. Yes, that's correct. Mm -hmm. What was the headline? What was the headline? ¿Cuál era el título? What was the headline? Maintenance plan. Okay, maintenance plan. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. But that kind that it is 
preventive, okay? Or preventive, yeah? Preventive plan. Preventive. Mm -hmm. A preventive okay. plan. It has stages. Did you hear some steps? Oyeron? Okay. Mm -hmm. You said three steps. Okay. Mm, do you remember or do you happen to remember those steps? Yes, teacher. Okay, tell me. First, you ever chose uh, the best employees. Second, mm -hmm. you ever have a good claim. Mm -hmm. And third, I really don't remember. All right, all right. We are going to listen to this again, all right? But we want to um, think about the three steps, all right? Follow the three steps. Take at least a short idea of what is each step, all right? Tips on how to organize a preventive maintenance plan. Step 1. Get the right people on board. Before you begin to organize your preventive maintenance plan, you need to have the right people on board with the plan. Include top management, maintenance managers, maintenance technicians, and any other staff who understands the way your system operates. This could include people from data processing, accounting, craftsmen, and members of production and production control. You may not need input from each of these people at every step of the process, but it's important to have them on board and kept up to date so you can get important feedback as you go. Step 2. Set goals for your preventive maintenance plan. Using your task force's input, set goals you hope to achieve using the system. Begin training your task force on the computer skills they'll need when your preventive maintenance plan goes into full effect. Step 3. Inventory the equipment and assets. Go through your facility and inventory all the equipment you're considering, including in your preventive maintenance plan, tagging the equipment as you go. Create a list of all the assets you have responsibility for. Record the following details as you go. And keep in mind that this process is much easier to carry out and organize with the assistance of a good preventive maintenance software program. Right. Okay, now tell me, what are the three steps? Number one. Keep on the work. Again. Keep on the on the work the the plane to maintenance. All right. Uh, I think I'm not getting this correctly, Henry. Uh, your idea is getting on board. Can you repeat it? Yeah, this conversation, I understand. Keep on the work. Oh, all right. Keep on the board. On the board. That's what you hear. Board. Yes. All right. Uh, so you understood uh, que manténgalo como en, el, en la lista or something. Sí, Henry? Yes. Okay. La verdad es que es keep on board. All right. Keep on board. On board is a phrase or a colloquial phrase to say mantener al tanto okay mantenga al tanto yeah on board on board 
También on board se usa eh, como para que la gente integre un grupo, ¿verdad? Integre un grupo. Viene pues de subirse al barco e irse todos juntos, ¿verdad? So, it's the same meaning, but at work, right? On board. Mm -hmm. All aboard, right? Something similar. Mm -hmm. All right, but on board is mantener al tanto. Okay, thank you very much, Henry. Uh, step two. Make an inventory. Okay, that's step three. That's step three. Ah. Excellent. Yeah, but that's step three. It's good. Uh huh. Okay. What about number two, guys? You got it? Set clear goals. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. To set goals, right? What you oh, need from yeah. the system or the, the, from your plan, right? Remember that you have to know also. Uh, how much money this is going to cost, right? Yeah. So you have to know what uh, goals you want to achieve with this yeah. plan. Yes, thank you. And everybody has to know what, uh, what, what we are expecting from them, right? All right, guys. Yes, now we have three steps. Okay, now let's go to the reading. Let's move to page 37. Everybody, please go on that page. And there we have the reading. OK, you have that page. And I will show you the slide, all right? And you are going to answer these questions. but with your group on the break of rooms. At the moment, we are going just to explain what is going to be the activity on the break of room, all right? So here we go. Okay. So this is the kind of guide to mm, go through this reading, okay? To understand ideas, to understand ideas. Okay, the step one, this is how to organize a preventive maintenance plan, a preventive maintenance plan, okay? Uh, we have three steps, step one, step two, step three, okay? If I, now I know what this is about. We know because we listen to the reading. Now, who are the right people to have on board? This is one of the questions. You are going to look this up in the reading that why is it important to have these people on board and to keep them up to date? Uh, is training necessary? Define the actions, how to inventory the equipment and assets, all right? Here, you are going to check what are the actions to follow, okay? But let's talk first about what is a preventive maintenance program or plan, okay? then we are going to define this as a series of processes, guidelines, tools for conducting regular and routine maintenance on equipment and assets to keep them in good condition. So as to avoid failure and costly unplanned downtime. All right, now we read this. Okay, tomemos 10 segunditos y lo leemos, okay? Everybody reading this concept. Okay, questions about the vocabulary in this uh, concept? Uh, I have a question, teacher. Tell me? No. Yes, uh, tell me. Assess, what's the meaning of assess? 
to keep. The resources, los activos, right? The ah. resources that you count on. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Okay. Any other question? The last three words, costly and planet downtime. Okay, costly, a very high price. Okay, a very high okay. price, costly. And planned, it's unexpected. You were not planning to stop the production or to shut down the machines. All right, okay. so costly and plan downtime. All right. Okay. Uh -huh. Any other question? Okay. Now that we know the concept of what is a preventive maintenance, then we go to the breakout rooms and we are going to read this article. We are going to discuss these questions. And also we have on the manual, a true or false. I don't know if you can see. Eh, ¿Qué es lo que pueden ver en la pantalla ahorita? Está el, el manual. ¿Sí se ve el manual? Yes. Yes, All teacher, right. pero Thanks. solo se ve, digamos, una, una part. parte. Okay, it's too big. Okay, thank you. Okay, here we have the other part. All right, this is the other activity we want to complete. True or false. All right, true or false. Look, we have five statements and we have to contrast with the reading. Okay. And we are gonna say if this statement is true or if this statement is false, all right? We okay? Okay, then let's go to the breakup rooms. Uh, I'll send this thing. There it is for easier, I mean, easier for you, okay? So let's go and check. Teacher, tell me. Las preguntas que mandó usted son diferentes a las que están en el manual. Yes, yes. Con eso vamos a trabajar. With both, two different activities. Okay. Mm -hmm. See you. All right. Teacher, tuve problemas con mi máquina, me sacó. Oh, okay. 
No, Así que me perdí un, ra un ratito, se me trabó la computadora. Ok, what, what group were you working with? Mm -hmm. Do you remember the number of your group? Perdón. Do you remember who were you working with? No. Don't you remember? All right. Okay, I'll send you to room two, okay? Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right. No problem. Tony? Tony, please join. Please join your room. Your room is number one. You go. We'll continue okay. with the step two. You? Okay. Step two. Set goals to, for your preventive maintenance plan. Using your task, but I'm sorry, using your task force input set goals you hope to uh, achieve using the system. Begin training your task for on the computer skills they need when. Hello, Tony. Yeah. Hello, teacher. You are alone here. Hello. Estoy llamándole a Juan, pero no está. <laughs> Creo uh, yo. Es que está en el trabajo. Sí, este, pues. Ajá, está solo como oyente. Entonces, ahorita la voy a pasar a otro grupo. Oye, Claudia. Bueno, está bien, está bien. Ok. Thank you. Uh -huh. La primera es este. having the appro appropriate people on board is not relevant. Eh, tener a la gente apropiada al tanto no es relevante. Relevant. Ah, entonces, mm -hmm. Lo que le está diciendo es que si, 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 si mantener a la gente apropiada al tanto no es relevante. Según la lectura, yo entiendo que sí. You need to have the right people on board. Plan. 
Is false. Ajá, exacto. Bueno, para mí es, es, es falso porque según la lectura dice que sí, hay que mantener a la gente. Bueno, de hecho, el tema del el paso uno es ese, mantener a la gente apropiada al tanto. Analicemos bien. Voy a pedir mucho en la noche. Yo voy a Um, yes, you yeah, have to it, say only but, if it is true or if it is false. All right. False. Mm -hmm. um, because um, you need to have the right people on board with the plan. This, this is the dialogue. Okay? So it is relevant, right? It is exactly. relevant. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Okay. Y, y the question, uh, bueno, aquí la oración dice, is not relevant. Mm -hmm. That's why you have to read the statement and you have That's to contrast true. with, yes, with the reading and then you say, true or false? Uh, false. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> plan and using your task force input set goals to have to act to using the system begin training your task force on the computer skill they'll need when you're preventing maintenance plan plan goes into full effect Roberto can you read Yes, step to right. Yes. Hello. Okay. Step, step two, set goals for your preventive maintenance plan. Using your tax force input, set goals you hope to achieve, achieve using the system. Begin training your tax force on the computer skills they'll need when your preventive maintenance plan goes into full effect. Claudia, can you read it, please? What, la number three? Number two. Number two, ah. Set goal for your preventive maintenance plan. Using your tax force input, set goals you have to achieve using the system. Beginning training your, uh, your tax force on the computer Six days new when your preventive maintenance plan go, goes in, into full effect. Okay, uh -huh. I will. I going to read number three and then and then you. Okay. Step three: inventory the yes. equipment, inventory the equipment and assets. Go through your facility and inventory all the equipment you're considering including in your preventive maintenance plan. Tagging the equipment as you go, create a list of all the assets you have responsibility for. Record the following details as you go, and keep in mind that this process is much easier to carry out and organize with the assistance of a good preventive maintenance software program. Can you read, uh, Don Carlos? Okay, step three, 
inventory the equipment and assets. Go through your facility and inventory all the equipment you're considering include in your preventive maintenance plan. Tagging the equipment as you go, create a list of all the assets you have responsibility for. Record the following details and you go and keep in mind that this process is much easier you carry out and organize it with the assistance of good preventive maintenance and software program. Robert, please. Step three, inventory the equipment and assets. Go through your facility and inventory all the equipment Y mantenerlas. Y mantenerlas. Them up. No me acuerdo que sí. You may, you may not need input from each of these people at every step of the process. <clears throat> But it's important to have them on board and keep up to date so you can get important feedback as you go. Because it's important. Mm -hmm. Because you can get important feedback as you go. Mm -hmm. It's important to have the number. Uh, keep up to date because you can get import, important feedback as you go. As you go. ¿Qué es eso? When you are on the process, right? When you are moving on the process of this plan, okay? Mm -hmm. At the same time that you are going through each step then you are having these important feedback right because it mm -hmm. says uh at every step right at every step so as you go through every step okay mm -hmm. Remember to use your dictionaries, all right? Mm. Okay, teacher. Feedback as you go. In the process. No sé si estoy bien así, lo voy a escribir. Escribirlo en el chat, por Creo que no se escribe así proceso. Oh. It's correct. It's correct. Okay. ¿Cómo? Uh 
¿Por qué es, impor por qué es importante ten en tener a estas personas a bordo? Eh, las preguntas que están en el chat son cuatro. Son cuatro, quiero ver. Yes, they are. Sí. Ok. Who are the... Hello, Blanca. Hello, teacher. What was your room? I don't know. I was with Claudia and Jose Salmeron. All right, just give me one second. Thank you. Hello. 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 All right. Mm -hmm. Did you finish the other four questions? Yes, yes teacher. Uh, yes. We have we, we have a question. Is uh, the exercise is true or false? Yes, this one okay. it is. Mm -hmm. The other okay. one, the other one on the WhatsApp group, uh, they are four questions that you have to answer. All right. <laughs> Yes. Sí, and, and other question. Mm -hmm. uh, it is 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 about this these words. Mm -hmm. The sentence say uh, setting goals, ajustar metas. Mm -hmm. In, in the text, we have we we find mm -hmm. goals, definir metas. Okay, uh, using the verb tenses, maybe in the context it gets a new meaning, but they have the same meaning: establecer metas, right? Entonces aquí sería aquí realmente lo estamos leyendo de manera correcta. Aquí ajustar metas. All right. Uh -huh. What does it say in the um, in the reading? Let's read in the context. Let's read that in the context. Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> you hope to achieve using the system. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Setting goals is an option for the DMP. And it really is, right? It really is. 
Nosotros lo entendimos. We, we have understand we, the, the, with the sentence is false. Because, because goals is, is a object, object, a object B. Mm. You are taking this as if there was a mistake and then you have to adjust. Is that what you understood? Mm -hmm. mm. Andrea Rafael, tell me, help me, please. <laughs> <laughs> This is the Okay, I think here is not about it's not about adjusting, it's establishing, all right, establishing the goals, right? Mm -hmm. I think that's the correct meaning. Or the closest meaning. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Mm -hmm. It's because this is according the according the reading. Okay, according the reading. It's not talking about the mistakes, right? Mm -hmm. You are trying to avoid, you are trying to avoid making mistakes or having problems or have closely uh, unplanned uh, cut downs, right? I think, Henry, that's true, okay? That's my point of view. That's my point of view. You are... Yes, yes, for me that's true because um, according to the reading, they are saying that it's important to set goals to achieve the, the objectives you are projecting, all right? Uh, what you need from the system, you have to establish clearly what you need, uh, even from people they have to know what, all right? So you have to uh, set the goals, right? You are looking at this as if there was a mistake and you want to uh, adjust it because it was a deviation, right? Porque se desvió un poco de la meta, pienso yo que es lo que usted está entendiendo, como para ajustarla. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, but no, according to the reading, it's setting goals. It, it's really an option. All right. Okay. You need to take that option. Ah, okay. These sentences uh, talking about uh, the recording progress and setting goals in the in the in the process, the PMP. No, because that's step two. Okay, that's step two. So step two is setting goals. All right? To set goals. Mm -hmm. Is it okay, Henry? Not yet? Okay. Uh, explíquemelo en español exactamente cuál es eh, la duda. Es que lo teníamos por lo que venimos dando seguimiento acá es definir metas uh -huh. y registrarlas en el sistema. Uh -huh. Ahí dice definir y aquí dice ajustar metas. Es una opción del programa de mantenimiento. Es cuestión de redacción, pero sí, miremos, oh, vaya, uh, scroll up, please, scroll up. Ahora vamos a leer porque dice set goals you hope to achieve using the system. No es que las va a registrar en el sistema, sino que usted necesita establecer las metas que usted espera alcanzar con el sistema que usted está planteando o está creando. ¿Ok? Con el sistema que usted tiene en la compañía y usted está 
dándole un mantenimiento preventivo a ese sistema. Entonces, usted tiene que establecer cuáles son las metas que usted quiere alcanzar. ¿Ok? Ok. Uh -huh. Entonces, Entonces, establecer las metas sí es una opción. ¿Ok? Ok. All right. Yo le entiendo que usted, por el significado... Eh, eh, digamos, a usted le gusta mucho la palabra semántico, ¿ya? Yeah. Semántico y es correcto, y es correcto, ok, es correcto. Sí, porque ya quisiera yo poder ajustar mis metas cuando voy a ir mal. Ajá, but you have to, uh, ok, setting goals, ten, de, tal vez no es que va a cambiar la meta, tiene que cambiar la estrategia, right? Ah, you have ok, to change the Set, setting Ajá, ok, ok. The same steps eh, of a strategy uh -huh. for, for the goals to, to this month. Uh -huh. Ok, you had to change, but, right? But, but I now change the, the, the goals. No, the, the, the goal is the same because it's what you want to achieve, all right? Uh -huh. Voy proyectando 60. Es mi nueva meta. 60. Oh my God. Projection, 60 projections. Uh, all right. And uh, is that money or is that uh, it's a, interviews it's a, or? How do you say porcentaje de cumplimiento? Uh, percentage of accomplishment? Accomplishment. 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 Uh -huh. accomplishment. Yes. Or yes, accomplishment per, percent, accomplishment percentage. Yeah, percentage, I think it is better. 60. 60. So, yes. My God. Well, I can't get how and, and you are going and, to get it, but you have to work hard. <laughs> and our country have a 60, 60 a 70, 75. Oh, uh, really? Yes. The 75%? All oh, yes. right. Good. Congratulations. No, it's not good. It's not good. We but have you said that your goal was 60%. Estamos rezagados. Oh, why? If you are getting 75%, it's more than 60. All country is at 70, 75. And we... Oh. It, uh -huh. And in my song, in my, my team, uh, it's a project uh, 70, 70% per percently. 70, 70%. All right. All right. Mm -hmm. So, yes, you are, but gradually you are going to get it. Eventually you are going to get to the general goal, right? Mm -hmm. Eventually. <laughs> and, 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 and we're not setting goals. <laughs> Okay. No, you cannot. You cannot. Mm -mm. Uh, eh, pero ese es el otro significado. Okay. That's a different meaning. Adjusting. Adjusting. But setting goals. Mm, setting goals. Establishing the goals. All right. Establishing the goals. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Thank you, teacher. Okay, I think you understand, but I think that you don't share that idea with me, right? <laughs> I think I didn't convince you. Keep crying. <laughs> okay, but yes, here is according to the reading, all right? All right, okay. Okay. Answer the other questions, guys. This no, question? On the chat. On the chat, you have the other questions. They are four questions. This. Oh, okay. No, no, the other one. Yes, that one. If you see in the left corner, there you have the four questions.
Okay, people. Uh, there was no time to call the attendance, so I'm going to call the attendance at the end, all right? And now we are going to complete or to share your ideas here, all right? Mm -hmm. Pero antes que nada, antes que otra cosa pase, a ver, everybody, I say boom, chica boom. Aha. Boom, chica boom. I say boom, chica boom. Boom, chica boom. I say boom, chica raca, chica raca, chica boom. Boom, chica raca, chica raca, chica boom. Okay. Chica boom, chica boom. <laughs> All right. Magyal's time. Uh huh. I say. <laughs> go, 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 go. I say boom. I check. Uh, no sé cómo de... <laughs> <laughs> I say boom, chica boom. I boom, say chica, boom, boom, chica boom. Mm -hmm. uh, everybody, I say boom, chica boom. I say boom, chica boom. I say boom, chica boom. Chica raca. Chica raca, chica raca, chica boom. Chica raca, chica raca, chica boom. Uh-huh. All right. All right, okay. Okay, uh-huh. Whose time is it? It's time, Karen. Karen's time. <laughs> Come on, Karen. <laughs> Karen, Karen. Let's go. Yay. You can do it. <laughs> You're a bad boy, my dear. You're a bad boy, Why? <laughs> uh -huh. I'm so shy for that activities. He loves Why? you. He loves you. <laughs> yes, I can see that. <laughs> Oh, okay. my. Come on, come on, Sorry, come on, Karen. Come on. <laughs> You're so bad. <laughs> oh. Okay. Mm -hmm. ah. <laughs> yes, it is. That's why we are doing this. <laughs> I feel like my student. You're so bad, my <laughs> Yay, 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 yay. <laughs> That's karma. <laughs> uh, okay, Karen. Too. Karen, come on, come on. Uh -huh. Okay. Um. Repeat the 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 the. the song. I say boom chicka boom. Ah okay. I say boom chicka boom. I say boom chicka boom. Everybody, everybody, come on. <laughs> I, I say, say boom, boom chicka boom. boom, chica boom. Uh -huh. I don't know. I can <laughs> do it. <laughs> I say boom chicka raka chicka raka chicka boom. Okay. I say boom chicka raka chicka raka chicka boom. All right. Yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. Whose time is it? Whose time is it? Whose time uh, is Rafael it? Rafael Alexander. All right. Go I ahead. Have I have problem for connection. <laughs> no, Don't do on. it. Come on. Come on. No. No way. All right. Uh -huh. But you have to make a movement. All right. Do your move. Uh, mm -hmm. I have uh, two left. Uh, yeah, but we are not <laughs> watching your feet. We are just watching your head, <laughs> all right? And your I hands. I say boom, chicka boom. I say boom, chicka boom, everybody. I Imitating. Say, yeah, chica boom, boom, chicka rock up, chicka rock up. Uh, I don't know what the follow. Chicka boom. Chicka boom. Uh -huh. chica I say boom, chicka rock up, chicka rock up, chicka boom. Yes, Ricardo. Mm -hmm. It's okay. Okay. All right. Uh, all right. Mm -hmm. time it's time to. <laughs> I think Ricardo wants to. Ricardo wants yeah. to. Okay, Ricardo, come on. He, he got the feeling. I say yes. chica boom. I say chica boom, everybody. Imitating. Hey, chica boom. Chica boom, chica boom. Uh huh. And chica boom. And chica boom. Uh -huh. And cucaracha, <laughs> cucaracha. No, sorry, sorry. Cucaracha. Uh, cucaracha, 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 boom. Yay. <laughs> oh, yay. All right. Alan Nilsson's time. 
I say, boom, chica, boom, chica, boom. I say, boom, chica, 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 what? I didn't chica, get boom, chica, chica boom. boom, chica, boom. Chica, boom. Mm -hmm. I say chica raca, chica raca, chica boom. I say chica raca, everybody, hey, eh? come on. Chica I raca, say chica, chica raca, chica raca, chica boom. Chica boom. Uh -huh. <laughs> All right. All right. It's time to Rafael. All right. <laughs> uh huh. Come here, Antonio. Yo. Yes, you do. Okay. I say chica boom. I say I, boom, chicka boom. Chica boom. Yeah, everybody chica moving. Chica <laughs> I say I boom, chicka raka, chicka raka, chicka boom. All right. All right. I need this feeling. Yeah, you need. So here we are for you. All right. Mm -hmm. Now, thank you very much, everyone, for dancing with me. We are continuing. Okay, everybody, breathe in. And breathe out. Okay, and now settle down. All right, settle down. Calm down. Teacher, okay. calm teacher. Yes, ahora lo vamos a tomar al final solo por hoy. Okay, only for today. Only for today. All right, thank you, Juan. Okay, guys, now we have two sets of questions okay or two activities we have the true false um, activity and we have the answers activity all right so we are going to ask mm -hmm. we are going to ask karen's group okay to answer these questions please one of you ask the question and the other one, it's going to answer the question. All right. Okay. Set everybody up over there. Karen, please. I'm so sorry. Mm -hmm. But we answer that the question following the text. Okay. F1, false. And then we are practice all the text with the pronoun. The pronunciation. Yeah, we didn't answer that questions. Oh, all right. So homework for you guys. Homework for you. Yeah, I forgot, it. Homework yeah, for I forgot you. it. <laughs> yes, but uh, we practice a lot about the pronunciation. Oh, good, good. So now, please, then you are going to give me the other set of um, of questions. All right. You will say if these are true or these are false. All right. Yes. So here we go having the appropriate, it's, it is important, etc. right? So here it is. Allow me to share this. Okay. Okay, Karen, please uh, tell your classmates who is going to say which one. We answered about the first one that it falls. Mm -hmm. Having the appropriate people on board is not relevant. Mm -hmm. Whereas that answer was false. Everybody agrees? Number mm -hmm. one? Yes. yes, teacher. True or false? False. All right. Yeah, false. false. Okay. What about number two? It's important to include people who understand of maintenance. Well, our answer was true. True. Is it true, guys? Do you agree? I'm a great yeah. teacher. It's true. true. It's true. True. All right. All right. Okay. Uh, thank you, Karen. We are going to ask. Uh, let me check the list. Okay, then Claudia Yamilet, please. Number three. Number three. Mm -hmm. Setting goal is an op option for the PM. PM and true. Okay, everybody agrees or disagrees? Agree, teacher. Agree. True. All right. Okay, true. Mm -hmm. Agree. It's, it's publishing. 
Okay, this is very important to comment here because Henry had a question in this one because he was trying to uh, show me that setting goals have a different meaning. It's not only establishing the goals, but adjusting the goals. That's, uh, I mean, Henry said, we cannot change the goal, but we can change the strategy, right? So he said, I cannot adjust the goal. I have to accomplish the goal, right? So yes, this is true, okay? This is true. Entonces, Henry decía, setting, así como está aquí, para él era ajustar, okay? Pero en la lectura está eh, set goals, establecer, ¿verdad? Las metas. Entonces, ahí teníamos ese ligero... Eh, duda, esa ligera duda. Así que si tuvieron esa duda, esto es de acuerdo a esta lectura, ¿ok? Y tenía, de acuerdo a este contexto. Uh -huh. Dicho, yo tenía la duda porque dice, it's an option. Uh -huh. eh, yo lo interpreté más bien como que es necesario. Es necesario. Ok. Set, setting goals. That's another point of view and excellent. Very good. Uh -huh. And it gives more light to the meaning, right? Mm -hmm. It becomes lighter here. All right, number four, number four, please. Um, let's look at Carlos Ernesto. Number four and five. Mm -hmm. Number for four. better result, creating a list of the assets is important. Important, mm -hmm. important. Mm -hmm. It's true. Agrees or disagrees? I agree. Everybody yes. agrees? Agree. Yes. Okay, is that true? Yes. Yes, of course. Inventory is the step three. All right. Number five, Carlos Ernesto. According to article, to carry out the PMP, a software is mandatory. All right. Is it mandatory? Is that true or is that false? It's false. Mm -hmm. I agree too. Okay. If you don't have a software program, you can do easier. it. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, on paper, right? Ink and paper. You can do that too. All right. Thank you. Thank you, group number one. We are going to talk just a little bit, okay? Just a little bit about these four questions. Uh-huh. ¿Quiénes sí la contestaron? A ver, díganme por ahí. Who answered this question? Okay, Rafael. Rafael, please. Uh, question number one. Antonio. ¿La contestaron ustedes? Rafael Antonio. A ver, ¿cómo la contestaron? Esta que está acá, mire. Who are the right people to have on board? Everybody? Anybody? Teacher. Mm -hmm. uh, Teacher, management, maintenance manager, maintenance technician, and, and any officer staff. Correct. Correct. Okay, those are the job positions that are needed in my, my maintenance plan, right? Because everybody has a part to do in these plans, all right? And they can help me to achieve my goal too. Okay, so mm, top management, etc. But the best people, I think it is, who understands the way your system operates, all right? The people or the staff who understands the way your system operates, operates, all right? I think that's the 
the answer for this question. Number two, why is it important to have these people on board and keep them up to date? Uh huh. Yeah. It's important important to have them on board and get up to date so you can get important feedback as you go. As you go through the process, right? In every step of the process. Thank you, Rosa. Excellent. Good answer. Number three, is it training necessary? Eric Jose? Number three? Yes, it is. Yes. This is necessary for a, for a, for get a better permanence in the process. All right, all right, mm -hmm. good. So here it says, right? Making training your task force on the computer scale failing when your preventive maintenance plan goes into full effect. So yes, training is necessary when the plan goes into full effect, all right? It's necessary before the start. It's necessary before. So it says begin training. Very good. Number four. Define the actions how to inventory the equipment and assets. Okay, first step. Tagging the equipment. Okay, tagging the equipment. Excellent. Next. Create, create a list of all the assets you have responsibility for. Excellent. Number three. Record the following details as you go. All right. And the last, I think it is. implement a software program, right? Implement a software program, if that's possible. All right, guys, yes, that's correct. Is there any question so far about this reading? Alguna pregunta de esta lectura? Okay, then let's go and move just a little bit into the idioms, all right? Into the idioms, because the idioms are expressions that mm, help us to make a warmer conversation with people, not robotic, nor by the book, and we learn some cultural expressions, all right? So let's move on, move into, move into this. One second. <clears throat> Let's look at some examples first, All right? Let's look at some examples first. So number one, it says, let's read these examples. Are you ready to hit the sack? Are you ready to hit the sack? Have you ever heard this expression, hit the sack? It's like to Got it, sir. do. Excuse me? Aha, uh -huh, yeah, but what's the idea here? What's the meaning of this expression? It's not to hit the sack. Yeah? Take a rest. Take, take a rest, mm, yeah, but mm. exactly is going to sleep, all right? Take an uh, opportunity. No, 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 no. It's no. go to sleep. Go Are to sleep. Ah. Are you ready to hit the sack? Yes. Hit the sack. Fight. Uh, go. <laughs> okay, guys. So, are you ready to hit the sack? Yes, uh, we're course, ready. Right? We're ready. Oh, yes. <laughs> the answer is let's do it. <laughs> okay, everybody from the bed. Everybody from the bed right now. Okay, number two, it says when things settle down here, I'll come to visit. Uh, I'm sorry, settle down here. Está un espacio de más. When things settle down here, I'll come to visit. Mm. What's the expression here? This is the expression, right? Settle down or settle down. Aquí está conjugado, ¿verdad? Mm. Aquí está conjugado como en un participio. Yeah. 
Okay, settle down means everything is in order, right? Everything, come down and gets right, I mean, in the right position, okay? In the right order, okay? Hey, cuando todo esté bien aquí, entonces voy a venir a visitar. Ahorita esto está un desastre, ¿verdad? Entonces, o ustedes están pele y pele, ay, voy a venir otro día a visitar. O está desordenado todo porque se están moviendo de casa. Entonces, when things uh, settle down, I'll come to visit, all right? So, number three, come on, kids. Stop shouting and settle down, please. That's a mom saying, <laughs> yeah. Come on, kids, stop shouting and settle down, please. All right? Settle down. Desenquietos, right? When settle the teacher down. is hungry. <laughs> when the teacher is angry or hungry. <laughs> All angry. Right. Okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah, when she's hungry, she's desperate too. All right. <laughs> okay, number four, I'm wiped out. I think I'll sleep like a log for at least two days. Hmm. Okay. What idea do you receive with this idea, with this expression? That you are very very tired. Yes. Wiped out is exhausted. Exhausted. Okay. You are tired, but there is another level. Exhausted, and there is another level. Wiped out. Okay. Estoy molido, ¿verdad? I'm wiped out. Pero wipe en realidad es como que lo limpiaron, o sea, lo desaparecieron limpiando. Y ahí está barrido or something like that. Arrastrado. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Now, number five. I should call back sooner, but it totally slipped my mind. Uh -huh. Ah, no vimos cuáles eran las dos expresiones. Aquí teníamos una expresión y aquí tenemos, tenemos otra. Miren, sleep like a log. Es como dormir como un tronco, ¿verdad? Sleep like a log. Uh -huh. También podríamos decir a sleep like a rock or sleep like a baby. Yeah, sleep like a baby. Uh -huh. Like a deep thing, okay? Okay, number five, I should call back sooner, but it totally slipped my, man, my mind. Uh -huh. ¿Cuál sería la idea acá? O la, el idiom. Slip my mind, yes. Slip my mind. Yes. Number six, I meant to go to the supermarket, but it slipped my mind same right esta es otra otra forma de decir i was supposed to okay i was supposed to i meant okay yo tenía que también i had to i meant all right and what you say teacher i was supposed to do mm -hmm. what yes. do you mean it's like that yes oh. i was supposed Two. I was supposed to bring or do my homework and I didn't do it. Mm, all right. Se suponía all right. que tenía que hacer mi tarea. Okay. Uh -huh. Pero no la hice. Aquí no pasa eso. All right. Aquí no pasa. <laughs> okay. Vamos a ver number seven. The reason of my visit has obviously slipped his mind. Entonces puede ser con cualquier persona, puede ser en cualquier tiempo verbal, ¿verdad? Eso es lo que queremos ver acá, que no solamente es en tiempo presente o en tiempo pasado, ¿verdad? Miren, puede ser con cualquier persona. Miren, his, aquí with my, ¿ok? So what, what means slipped his mind? Que se le olvidó o esa cosa se le... Uh, vaya, okay. nosotros decimos como se me escapó, ¿ok? Se me escapó de la mente y no lo hice, ¿ok? Something like that. Slip en realidad es deslizarse, ¿verdad? Slip. Mm -hmm. Ok, number eight. God, keep my head above water. Keep my head above water. Mm -hmm. What is above? Up, right? Up. So, 
to survive, right? Save me, God, save me, right? Sometimes this is applied, okay? This is applied to have trouble managing our money, okay? Mm, when we don't have uh, abundant um, goods in our house, okay? Then we can say that. I am, uh, look at the number nine. I have to work 60 hours a week just to keep my head above water. Solo para mantenerme a flote, ¿verdad? Para sobrevivir, okay? To survive, all right? Got it? Okay. So the complete idiom is to keep my head above water, right? <clears throat> and if you are giving your testimony, right? Then you say, for example, God kept my head in the past, right? In the past, it was an experience. Así que se puede usar con cualquier tiempo, tiempo verbal y en cualquier, para cualquier persona, okay? I really did not want to attend that meeting. Thankfully, another urgent matter, matter came up and I got off the hook as had, as had to attend to it. All right. La frase es off the hook, off the hook, or get someone off the hook, let someone off the hook, también. This is when someone uh, commit a crime and he's not charged, he's discharged from justice, all right? Uh, es como salirse con la suya, right? Off the hook. Um, uh, you are not blamed for the crime you committed. Uh, there is, uh, that's not justice. That's not justice, but what, yeah, of the hook what, is that, what, legally. What, what is the meaning if you try to translate literally of the hook? Of, así, como se salió con la suya o quedó libre, sin cargo, sin culpa. Salió impune, decimos en El Salvador, ¿verdad? Esa la conocemos súper bien, los salvadoreños. Quedó impune. Meaning in the, the this, uh, idioms? Eso, ese es el, el significado, que se salió con la suya, no le pusieron ningún cargo. Uh -huh. Yeah, but the the meaning of the words is uh, fuera de su gancho o algo así. Yeah, fuera del gancho. Uh -huh. Es que antes habían esas costumbres, ¿verdad? Que lo que agarraba el gancho era mío. Yeah, algo así. Entonces, lo que se sale del gancho no es mío, no, no queda. O cuando hacen redada, por ejemplo, agarran a todos y uno queda por ahí volando libre, ¿verdad? So, something like that. Okay. Okay, guys, we have only two minutes. We have only two minutes. I know. Estamos ahorita squeezing the time here, <laughs> squeezing the clock. <laughs> All right. We are counting the minutes. In the manual, page 38 is the last page. All right. Is the last page for this, uh, of this unit, of this unit. I'm sorry. Let me go over there. Ahí tenemos un listado. There we have a list of some, some uh, expressions and idioms, all right? So there you can find some of the expressions we explained just a little while ago or right before. But the thing here is that there are some others that I didn't write a sentence. What you have to do is to write a sentence for those that you didn't find out in my examples, all right? Okay. Okay, here they are. ¿Cuál va a ser nuestra herramienta principal? El diccionario. 
the dictionary, okay? There are dictionaries that uh, gives you the, um, I mean, there are dictionary, I'm sorry, okay. There are dictionaries that give you the social meaning or the cultural meaning, okay? Not the literal meaning. So you are going to look for those dictionaries, all right? The Merriam-Webster or the Oxford Dictionary. Remember, Oxford is British. So it has a lot of expressions from British English and not for American usually, all right? So you have to look up for American too because maybe they don't mean the same thing in the two different English, all right? English languages. Okay, we have wiped out to have a lot on one's plate, all right? To settle down, hang in there, to keep one's head above water, to scale back one's hours, all right? Stressed out, slip one's mind. Entonces ustedes tienen que hacer una oración con hang in there, una con um, esta, to have a lot on one's plate, Una con to scale back one's hours, stressed out, solamente, okay? This four, one, two, three, and four. Got it? Entonces las vemos mañana ya cuando las traigan hechas. One, two, three, and four. Got it? Okay, teacher. Ok, así las vemos mañana ya cuando ustedes hayan investigado por ahí cómo usarlas en una oración. Ok, it's 10 o'clock, so allow me to call the roll. Is there any questions so far, guys? Questions? No, teacher. All right. Andrea Sofía Benítez Gómez. Present teacher. Ok. Blanca Alejandra Portillo Bermúdez. Present teacher. Carlos Ernesto Pérez. Present teacher. Carlos Roberto Alemán Prudencio. Present teacher. Claudia Yamilet Coreas. Present teacher. Ellen Nilsson Aparicio del CID. Present teacher. Eric José Hernández Campos. Present teacher. Hazel Elizabeth Navarro de Cervellón. Henry Alberto Pérez Rosales. Hazel estaba Here por allí, teacher. ¿verdad? Henry, ok, yes. Henry, thank you. ¿Verdad que Hazel estaba por acá? Yes, in the beginning of the class. Yes, but now she isn't, right? All right. Uh, Juan Francisco Salmerón Alas. Present teacher. Okay, Karen Chamilet Rivas de Ayala. Present teacher. Matiel Esau García Morales. Present teacher. Rafael Alexander Serna Díaz. Present teacher. Rafael Antonio Barrera Díaz. Present teacher. Eh, Ricardo Tony Mendoza Castro. Present teacher. Present. Rosa del Carmen Santa María Tobar. Wilber, Wilber is not here, right? Oh, okay. Jose Abel Aguirre Mendoza. No, Jose Abel either. All right. Pedro Alexander Osorto Sanchez. Present teacher. Okay. Yo quiero animarlos. Quiero animarlos. Miren, es muy importante que estén presentes. Traten teacher. a toda costa de. Perdón, Juan. Rosa eh, dijo presente en el chat de WhatsApp porque dice que le falla el Inter. Ok, thank you very much, Juan. Thank you. Ok, yeah, thank you. Ah, es importante que estén presentes. Miren, ahí les mandan el WhatsApp. A veces no lo ven, ¿verdad? A veces no lo ven. Ahí está sin verlo. Solo el Enil son los mira, ¿verdad? Y de ahí los demás no sé si lo ven, eh, pero es necesario que estén presentes, ¿ok? Si usted por A o por B motivo no va a presentarse, repórteme, ¿ok? Y aparte de eso, recuerden que no es un permiso el que les da la teacher. La teacher no les dice, ah, vaya, falte, no hay problema. Pero su score, 
del attendance va a bajar porque es por el sistema. Acuérdense de eso, ténganlo en mente. Vaya, y la última cosa es que yo posteé una actividad por ahí, ¿verdad? En donde ustedes van a leer acerca de PMP, ¿verdad? Eh, y van a sacar de esa lectura solo cinco verbos y los van a buscar, ¿ok? En el diccionario, ¿qué significan? Cinco verbos, pero phrasal verbs, ¿all right? Phrasal verbs, que ustedes no conozcan, ¿verdad? Porque... Look up, ya lo conocen. Entonces, busquen los que no conocen para buscarlo en el diccionario. ¿Ok? Five, five verbs only that you don't know. Ok. Phrasal verbs. Bien. La sesión uno a uno, chicos. Hello, teacher. Hello, Hernán. No me nombró. Hernán Antonio Chacón López. Sí, aquí okay. lo tengo. Ok. 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 okay. Thank uh, you. Ok. Vamos a ver, la sesión 15 le toca a Rafael Alexander, Cerna Díaz. Pero lo veo que está bien, boom, chica, boom. ¿Quiere quedarse el día de hoy, Rafael? I'm sorry, teacher. Alguien quería quedarse ayer, ¿verdad? ¿Alguien necesitaba quedarse ayer? ¿Que quiera quedarse hoy? Ayer era mi turno. Ah, ok, Magdiel. Ok. Pero no sé si... Si ah, quiere, es que me... Wilber dijo, Wilber dijo, es cierto. Pero está bien, Magdiel, no, yo creo que no hay ningún problema. ¿Vea que no se enoja a nadie que se quede Magdiel otra vez? ¿Se reenganche? No, va. ¿eh? Es que yo me he quedado dos veces ya, Ticha. Ah, pero es que los demás no se ponen gusto. Go ahead, go ahead, no problem. <ríe> Ay, no, Karen, bien enojada, Karen, porque usted <ríe> se queda, mire, Magdiel. <ríe> Ya se la desquitó, mire, Karen, ahorita. Eso, si no me quedo yo, ticha. Ok, bueno, oh. decidamos, Magdiel y Blanca, ¿quién quiere? No, la boca de tijera. Ajá, <risa> yeah, rock, paper, scissors. Por mí no hay problema, ticha. Ok, Blanca, es su turno entonces. Bien, okay. vamos entonces todos a hacer su tarea. See you tomorrow, have a very good night, good night. everybody. Good night. Good night. Good night, everybody. Sleep tight. Bye. Good night, teacher. Good night. Go to hit the sack. Mm -hmm. Hello, Pedro. All right. Hello, Blanca. How can I Hello, assist teacher. you? Tell me. Hello. Uh, okay. I would like to aprovechar el tiempo. <laughs> to take advantage. Uh huh. Yes, because my baby is sleeping. He's sleeping. All right. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So it's some difficult to me pay attention all the class because he always stay with me and he cry and I have to sleep her. But uh, I would like to know some more, uh, more about the topic of today. Mm -hmm. Mo, ay, ¿Cómo dijo que se llamaban? Idioms. Idioms, yes. Ah, okay. yo, yo estaba haciendo lo del libro, lo, de, lo del workbook y estaba viendo de que hay más idioms. De hecho, el día de ayer me quedé como un poquito en la luna porque me costó bastante entenderle porque por ratitos y así. Pero ya ahora este, que preste más atención y todo, ya es como que entendí un poquito más el contexto, como de, ah, son como, o sea, ya lo que estaban hablando y todo, ¿verdad? Pero sí me gustaría como eh, refrescar o aprender un poco más sobre diferentes idiomas que existen. Because I think that is some important, but, um, porque en el lenguaje americano o, por ejemplo, cuando uno se está expresando con otras personas, eh, para no escucharse como muy robótico es necesario como aprenderlo. ¿verdad? Entonces sí me gustaría como repasar un poquito más eso. Este, bueno, estaba viendo que lo que nos dejó para el día de mañana también son más idioms y los que vimos ayer también son más idioms, entonces me gustaría como repasarlo y más o menos ir como reconociendo el, el, el contexto de cada uno para, para saberlos identificar al momento de, de utilizarlos. Ok. Eh, de hecho, el único que yo me sabía era el de It's Rainy Cats and Dogs. 
Oh, okay, good. It's raining Muy cousins. Porque uh, yo me aprendí cuando estuve, anteriormente estuve estudiando, pero este, o sea, no sabía que existían más. Uh -huh, y okay. es bastante interesante porque, ajá, o sea, quizás al momento de hablar uno piensa que todo es como que bien sistemático y hasta se lo pueden bajar a uno. <laughs> <laughs> okay, ajá, uh -huh, you're right. Well, look. This is the situation. With the idioms, there is no uh, rule to follow, okay? There, there is no a rule. Mm -hmm. um, so what you have to do, it, I think the best, uh, the best way or the best strategy to learn the, the idioms is when you, for example, put your mind in one topic, for example, expressions at the workplace, all right? Mm -hmm. Then you can say expressions in the kitchen, all right? Expressions with family, okay? Mm -hmm. Expressions with friends hanging out, for example, mm -hmm. with friends. Then if you place yourself in a reduced topic, then you are going to get them better, all right? Okay. Because if you study them, just mm, picking one from here and picking one from other place, maybe they are not be they are not going to be useful for you. All right. So the first thing is because that they are not polite. Not exactly. Not no. It's not about politeness. It's about uh, meanings. Okay. It's about mm -hmm. meanings or contexts. Maybe mm -hmm. some are not proper in a different context, all right? Mm, or understood in a different context. But look, mm, there are some topics or mm, that you can follow, all right? That you can follow. For example, podemos decir que podemos buscar idioms que contengan la palabra o que estén relacionados con las cosas de comida, okay? Mm -hmm. Entonces, ese sería un buen tema para comenzar, ¿verdad? Pero también puede ser otro buen tema, idioms at the workplace, ¿verdad? Sería un buen tema porque ahorita ya llevamos bastante de los temas de trabajo en donde hay mucho vocabulario que usted ya maneja, ¿verdad? Mm -hmm. Entonces, eh, podríamos decir, ¿verdad? por ejemplo, eh, uh, work idioms, work idioms and phrases. Acuérdese, hay unos que sí es un, un, un dicho completo y es como tradicional el dicho y en todos lados se lo entienden, pero hay phrases también, ¿verdad? Que no exactamente es una oración completa con sujeto, verbo y complemento, ¿verdad? Sino que solamente puede ser una expresión, ¿verdad? Pequeña, mmm, así como los imperatives, por, ex, por ejemplo. Entonces, um, a ver, veamos, American English. Porque, como le repito, en British, we have different. Entonces, hay un sitio en donde usted puede encontrar algunos, ¿ok? Pero le vuelvo y le repito, lo mejor, lo mejor es que vaya por temas. Uh -huh. Y lo que usted necesita decir, porque hay cosas que no no las necesita. Entonces, por acá tenemos 10 acerca del trabajo. Espérenme, déjenme encontrar el sitio. Por aquí lo tenía. Ok. Ajá. Por Bye. Example, uh -huh. uh, it's Authentic Journeys. Ok, that's the site. Uh, just give me one second. Uh -huh. Bye. Entonces, por acá tenemos algunos idioms. Ok. Uh, en algunos casos los idioms son frases con, ay, ¿cómo decirle? Con palabras que su significado sí es literal, pero hay otros, uh -huh. esas, esas más bien son frases, esas más bien son frases, pero hay otros como los idioms en que el sentido no es literal, ¿verdad? Entonces, aquí en el manual teníamos uno. Ya le voy a pasar el link que le digo porque ahorita está cargando el sitio que es Journey. 
Ok, ahí voy a ingresar al, al manual porque ayer estaba viendo unas uh -huh. en las lecturas que estábamos haciendo ayer. Exacto. Uh -huh. eh, igual no, no lo entendía muy bien. Ahorita le digo cuál es. Uh -huh. En la conversación tenemos varios cuando llamamos para reportarnos enfermos. Ajá, es, vaya, uh -huh. por ejemplo, esa de, de hecho creo que se la explicó, pero yo no, no entendí muy bien. Esa de Tighten Up. Okay. Eh, y esa de Face Up. Ah, esa ya es en la otra, vamos a ver, esa ya es en la otra. Es en la, de, en, la de, en la de ayer. Ajá, en los phrasal verbs. Que, ajá, que estábamos repasando. Este, y. O sea, prácticamente casi que por, por, por lógica, pero no le, solamente esas dos no entendí muy bien. Tighten up y... Ah, es que estaban también esas, ¿verdad? Que eran, que eran diferentes porque no eran oraciones en sí, sino que solo eran como palabras, ¿verdad? Exacto. Esos son phrasal verbs. Phrasal uh -huh. verbs. Que al agregarle al verbo, a la parte verbal, ¿verdad? Una eh, palabra que es una preposición, ¿verdad? le cambia el significado o uh -huh. le acerca más el significado a lo que yo quiero decir. Uh, y tenía, ya, le voy, ya voy a pasar a esa parte. Entonces, la primera es que, por ejemplo, acá tenemos algunos idioms. Estos sí son idioms. Obviamente su estómago no la está matando, ¿verdad? Uh -huh. No la está asesinando, digamos, ¿verdad? Uh -huh. Entonces, usted dice, my stomach is killing me, es que usted tiene a severe pain, right? Uh -huh. Or you are suffering something um, serious, right? Ahora, así que ese dog decíamos que era cuando usted se enferma del estómago. Nunca uh -huh. nos gusta decir directamente las palabras, ¿verdad? Que son. Siempre uh -huh. son como molestas, ¿verdad? O, o gross, gross. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Entonces, obviamente no le vamos a llamar al jefe y decirle, mire, fíjate que tengo vómito y diarrea, ¿verdad? No, o sea, uh -huh. le voy a decir, fíjate que estoy bien mal del estómago usted, ¿verdad? Entonces, uh -huh. le voy a decir, I'm a sick as a dog. I'm a sick as a dog. ¿Ok? La frase que hay que decir la Ajá, completa. De hecho, esa, esa fue la del martes, ¿verdad? Esa, uh -huh. I remember that class. Eh, ok. Because eh, I can understand that eh, more easy than, than, than the other one. Yes. Ok. Because, Entonces, no podemos eh, I, a la otra. I understood the, uh -huh, I understood the, the context. Ok. Ahora, ¿cuándo sucede esto? Esto sucedía cuando había problemas con el equipo y queríamos llamar a un technician, ¿verdad? Mm -hmm. We okay. want to call up a technician or there is a problem, an issue with machinery, then when they are repairing machine up, then they use these phrasal verbs to, okay. to give a closer meaning of, of the action, all right? Of the action. So for example, uh, it says, uh, tighten up, es un phrasal verb, es un verbo que está compuesto de la, la parte verbal y la parte de preposición. Ah, uh, okay. Mm -hmm. That topic was some difficult. But I remember that you show us a, uh, a phrase of verbs and we have to order, put in order, but, but it some, was some difficult. Ah, okay. Uh -huh. Because some of these verbs are separable and some of these verbs aren't. So we need to know which ones are, uh, um, are going to be separated and which ones you cannot and do how that. can i know that there is no other way more than okay two things we said practice all right practice and recall them memorize them okay. i gave yeah it doesn't I, have a or... no 
the rule okay. the 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 rule that we want to follow is if that verb is transitive or intransitive usually okay. usually the transitive verbs voy a ir a ese slide para que recuerde un poquito okay. sí recuerdo que eso fue lo que más que todo a mí me me quedé uh -huh. con el live okay entonces va mire tenemos acá vale. tenemos que por ejemplo podemos unir verdad o completar un verbo eh, um, uh, frasal, digamos, un phrasal verb uh -huh. con la parte del verbo o el verbo en sí y la preposición. En este caso, wake up ya lo conoce, ¿verdad? Seas up sí. ya lo conoce ahorita, que era arruinarse. Look up, aquí hay dos cosas, porque look up, así por sí, up significa arriba, ¿verdad? Pero en este caso, Look up también tiene otro significado, que sería search, que sería buscar, ¿verdad? Ok. Entonces, eso es lo que pasa con los phrasal verbs. Ok. Ok, sorry, teacher. No problem. Okay. Uh -huh. Con los phrasal verbs, cambia el significado agregándole una preposición. Por ejemplo, look up es buscar en el diccionario. ¿Verdad? Uh -huh. O buscar en un libro, buscar informaciones, look the information up. Bye. Tighten, uh -huh. tighten up es solamente eh, finalizar la acción, ¿ok? Hacerlo bien, tighten up, apretarlo bien. Uh -huh. okay. Ajá. Come up es, por ejemplo, ya si yo le agrego a come, la preposición up nos da otra idea, ya no es venir arriba, uh -uh. es como se me ocurrió. Ok, come up, o oh, surgió, okay. surgió okay. algo, ¿verdad? Go up ya no sería ir arriba, ¿verdad? Ese sería el sentido literal, pero mm -hmm. no, significa increase, ¿verdad? Right? Increase, mm -hmm. hacer algo que suba tal vez en una velocidad más rápida, ¿verdad? Okay. Por ejemplo, go up, eh, y se pueden usar estos verbos en diferentes tiempos verbales, no solamente en el tiempo presente. ¿Verdad? Clean up es que limpió todo. O sea, recogió desde el suelo y limpió arriba también. O sea, no solamente una cosa, ¿verdad? Clean es en general. Clean up es que lo hizo y lo completó. Ok. okay. Uh -huh. Entonces, la diferencia era que los transitivos, ok, transitive verbs plus the direct object, ok, the direct object, uh, give us the idea That the transitive are separable, ¿ok? Are okay. separable. Ahora, sí tienen un objeto directo, pero hay verbos que no tienen un objeto directo. Eso se llaman intransitive, ¿ok? The intransitive son inseparable, ¿ok? Do you have an example the transitive, transitive and intransitive? Ok, it's the same as this. Uh, so, if you look, Turn on the lights. The lights sería el objeto directo. Ok. The lights es el objeto directo. ¿Por qué? Porque ¿qué es lo um, que encendió? Yes. Las uh -huh. luces. Ok. Yes. Nos preguntamos what para saber qué es el objeto directo. ¿Verdad? Ok. Ok. Pero acá, por ejemplo, no hay objeto directo. Aquí no hay objeto directo. ¿Por qué? Porque aquí... Si yo pregunto, what catched up? The information, right? Y eso no está aquí. Aquí está with you later for you to tell me the information. Ok, para que usted me dé la información y nos pongamos como al día, ¿verdad? That's okay. catch up. Entonces, catch up no tiene un objeto directo. Entonces, yo puedo decir que es como una regla en general, aunque no es Siempre así, en su, digamos, 90% es así, ¿ok? So, uh -huh. turn on the lights, puede ir separado o puede ir eh, junto, ¿ok? Hay otros que eh, no pueden ir separados, ¿ok? Va, veamos estos primero. Turn on the lights. Uh -huh. okay. Vamos Teacher, a ver. I have a question. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. No sé si me está mostrando otra pantalla, pero ahorita me parece solo el libro. Eh, sí, le estoy mostrando el, 
el slide. A ver, vamos a ah, ver. Es que no me aparece. Ay, por eso yo va de darle y va a demostrarle ahí. No, Pero... y yo buscando cuando me decía catch up y yo buscando a dónde dice. Ay, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Okay, Va, okay. mire, la okay. cuestión es así. Entonces veníamos con los que son up, ¿verdad? Acá, desde acá comenzamos. Luego, luego podemos decir que a un verbo ya con diferentes preposiciones, cada uno va a ser diferente. Getting es subirse al bus, por ejemplo, o subirse a... Get on, get on es subirse al bus. Getting es entrar en algo, ¿verdad? Get in. Ajá. Get over, like, salir. También get in es cuando vamos a tratar un tema, ¿verdad? Mm. Eh, get over, no, get over es como dar por finalizado o también eh, sobrepasar un obstáculo. ¿Verdad? Okay. Get over, sobreponerse. Get up es levantarse de su cama, ¿verdad? Ese es el verbo. Get around, ir a muchos lugares, ¿verdad? Get to, okay. get to es también tratar un tema, ¿verdad? Get into, get into ya es un movimiento, ya es un okay. movimiento, ¿verdad? De entrar, pero en okay. movimiento. Bye. Get off. Es bajarse del bus, por ejemplo, o salirse de algo grande, ¿verdad? Okay. Get through es pasar a través de, ¿ok? Pasar a través de. Ahora, okay. cada, cada, cada uno va a ser diferente el significado. Entonces, volvemos al transitivo y el intransitivo. El transitivo sí tiene. El intransitivo no tiene direct object. Entonces, okay. decimos, el intransitivo, perdón, el intransitivo es inseparable, ¿ok? Y aquí lo tenemos, I'll catch up with you later. Aquí no hay objeto directo. Ahora, aquí sí, separable, turn on the lights. The light is the direct object. Yo okay. puedo separar y pasar el objeto directo, pasarlo en medio de las dos eh, partes de este verbo frasal. Entonces, sería turn the light on. Turn the lights on. Cualquiera de los dos es correcto. Pero hay pues, unos en donde no, no va. El orden. Uh -huh. Exacto. Pero hay algunos que no se pueden separar. Por eso yo les envié dos listas. Les uh -huh. envié dos links en donde usted puede ver la lista de transitivos e intransitivos. Y en otro puede ver la lista de verbos separable and inseparable. Okay. Para que usted vaya memorizando. Es lo mismo como los idioms. Vaya por temas, ¿verdad? Okay. Vaya por acciones. Ahora, el idiom que usted me decía, los idioms que me decía. Eran los de eh, este de. Este de. Permítame. Estos. Uh -huh. A dime a dozen. A dime a dozen quiere ah, decir sí. que son abundant, abundant, mm -hmm. quiere decir que son abundantes las pupuserías en Olocuilta, ¿verdad? Mm -hmm. Entonces, pupuserías are a dime a dozen en Olocuilta. Mm -hmm. Oh, don't worry, it's a dime a dozen, I'll get another soon. Imagínese que se le quebró algo y no, hombre, de eso hay un montón ahí en el centro. Entonces, voy a, ya voy a conseguir uno, something mm -hmm. like that, ¿ok? Is, okay. And the other is beating around the bush, beating mm -hmm. around the bush. Pero aquí está conjugado porque eh, podríamos decir to beat, ¿verdad? Or beat mm -hmm. around the bush. Entonces, los diputados, ¿verdad? Mm, solamente están dando, redundando, ¿verdad? Redundando y no llegan al punto. Están evitando llegar al punto en su impeachment, en el mm -hmm. impeachment. Impeachment mm -hmm. es la... Interpelación, ok. Ah, ok. Ok. So, number four, go and break a leg. Break a leg is good That's luck. Good luck. Yes. Uh -huh. Good luck. Mm -hmm. Call it a day. Call it a day es que terminamos el día ya, ¿verdad? Demos por finalizado que ya terminamos de trabajar. Vámonos, ¿verdad? That's call it a day. No okay. customers outside, let's call it a day. Ok. Bueno, ya no vino nadie, ya está oscuro. Ok, cerremos, ¿verdad? Call it a day. We have had to hang in there to overcome these challenges. Podemos decir hang in there es hacer, eh, ¿cómo se llama esto? 
Eh, hanging there, no, no, no. Eh, sí, ese es el significado literal. Pero hanging there es como um, permanece. Ah, espérame, ya le voy a decir el significado. Así sería aguante, aguante. Okay. Soporte, lo aguante. Eso okay. sería. Uh -huh. Y así, ¿verdad? Podemos, como le vuelvo a repetir, eh, conjugar el verbo. Hang. Mire, este es pasado también, ¿ve? We hang in there mm -hmm. until the rescue team finally arrived. ¿Ok? Y And así. change the, the form of the verb. Sí. Mm -hmm. you, can, you can conjugate the verb. Mm -hmm. Y sí, así por temas, usted puede ir sacando sus propios. Ah, le voy a pasar el link de uno okay. de los sitios. Estos solo son 10 mm. expressions, ok, 10 expressions, que le van a servir, digamos, en su diario, en su inglés diario, mm -hmm. ¿verdad? Pero, ok. Sí, porque, eh, quiero ver. Es como Pero, para comenzar, no, porque en realidad no. tiene que ser lo que a usted le interese conocer. Okay. El martes vimos sobre como enfermedades, ¿verdad? Ya ayer vimos, y ahora como cosas ya más de trabajo. ¿verdad? Exacto. Bueno, es lo que me estaba diciendo usted hace un momento, ¿verdad? Que estábamos viendo cómo ya está relacionado al trabajo. Uh -huh. Así es, ajá. Es, es mejor ir por temas para que vayamos asimilando el conocimiento, porque si no, se nos va a hacer una maraña de cosas y no vamos a saber en dónde, qué, cómo, cuándo, dónde, por qué, para qué. <ríe> ok. Yes. Ajá, okay, entonces te la voy a pasar los, acá. Y los, y estos idioms, entonces. Ajá, aquí le voy a pasar estos. Estos solo son 10 expresiones, ok, que le pueden servir, pero estas son más phrases, ¿verdad? Phrases, okay. por ahí es donde debemos comenzar. Phrases, okay. porque usted sabe vocabulario y lo aplica en una frase. Luego okay. ya vamos a ir conociendo el trasfondo cultural de las cosas, ¿verdad? Para okay. seguir agregando idiomas, ¿verdad? Ok, teacher. Ok. Thank you so much. For All right. Speaking. Very good. Very no excellent. problem. No problem. Ok. Teacher. Give a kiss. I mean, kiss your baby for me, all right? Thank you. Ok. Have a very good night, Blanca. You too. Good night. Thank you. Thank you.